Hey, it's good to see you. Uh, my name's Evan, in case you don't know. Maybe you're new here. Uh, I'm the lead pastor here, and we're just glad that you're here with us today, uh, joining us. I hope that today uh, you find some friends, you find some family, you find a connection. Uh, we, we, love, we love doing this together. We love coming together, and, and uh, if you notice, you look around the room, you notice it's multi-generational. Uh, there's, there's the older, there's the younger, there's people from all different walks of life here in one space. That's what church is supposed to look like, just so you know. It's not an accident that, that that's who's in the room. We're meant to look that way. That's what, that's what we're, we're, we're for. We're, we're for that, and we're all pointing just to, to the same place. We're all aiming at Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. Didn't our worship team do great for us today? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, they did a great job. And also, I think the chairs look awesome, by the way. Pastor Allen, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's my uh, creative authority within this church. Uh, I can do what I want with those chairs, all right? Uh, but we're going to, hopefully, hopefully they, they fit you well. Uh, we're, in, we're in the fourth week of this series called New. And we're looking, we're looking through Scripture, and, and particularly at, at, uh, at, at post-Jesus death and resurrection, because pre, pre-Jesus, you know, uh, the Israelites knew God as God above. Jesus showed up and started walking around the earth, and people said, who are you? Like, what, what do you say about yourself? And he's like, well, I'm God, actually. Uh, if you look at the Father, you see me. You look at me, you see the Father. We're one and the same. I am the Son of God. I am, I am Him. And so everyone's like, whoa. Not, now it's not just God above us. It's God uh, with us, beside us. He's, he was called Emmanuel. The angels proclaimed Him to be Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. He's coming. He's, he's coming to join you in your life. And it was like amazing. But then he died. It was shocked the whole world, shocked all of his disciples, shocked all of the followers. Like if God came and God was with us and God was beside us, how did God die? That doesn't make sense. How can he, how can he be gone now if he was God? And then he came back and it changed everything again. Where now Jesus started speaking to his disciples about what would happen after he went uh, for good. That, that God the Father has been with you forever, but he felt distant. God the Son showed up and walked beside you and felt closer. But I want you to know I'm getting even closer. That when I go away, I will send God the, the Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is going to come and meet with you. And it won't be God above you anymore. It won't be God beside you anymore. It will be God within you from now on. That you actually get to walk out the power and life of the Holy Spirit in your life. That God actually gets to move through you in your life. And so we really believe that as a church. That when we become Christians, that the Spirit, that the Spirit comes and, and fills us. And that actually there's this thing that happens later on in the Bible. That, that there's this baptism of the Holy Spirit where there's this outflowing, this, this uh, overtaking. Where there's these new gifts, new power, new, new life, new hope, new courage, new all of this new stuff started taking place at that point. That's what we've been talking about the last few weeks. We talked about the idea that there was a new uh, road to righteousness. We've looked at some of the new patience uh, and the new power that we're meant to have. And you can see all the, the old, verse, uh, the old uh, sermons that we've done previously online. But today we're going to talk about this new unity. There were these new gifts that started showing up, but, but they created actually this new unity. I like the prophecy that came uh, hundreds of years before, Joel 2, 28 to 29, it says, and afterward, and Joel's talking uh, as a prophet, he's talking about what God is going to do after Israel's really dark season. They were in a really challenging time. They were overcome by this, this, this tyrant, powerful empire at the time. Uh, they were heading into, into just darkness for, for years. And it says this, And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I love it. It's, it's old men, young men, uh, women and men, even on my servants. So he says, not, and it doesn't matter where, 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 what class of society you're in. On all people, on both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I love that picture of what God wants to do. You know, God didn't create a, 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 a hierarchy of gifting. 
that I'm going to give some important gifts to important people, and I'm going to give some important powers to important people. I'm going to create a, create a power structure within church and within society. He didn't, he didn't say some things are going to be better than others, and, and he didn't say of this church that as long as you have a good pastor uh, executing his gifts, then you'll have a good and healthy church. But the Spirit of God, when the Spirit comes and moves, every believer is filled. Every believer who will accept is given gifts and, and empowered Empowered, and this church to thrive at its best is going to require every single gift in this church. There's not one gift that, that, that you, you sit out and go, oh, they don't really need mine. They got a preacher. They got some worship team. They know they got that. Why do they need me? It, that, that, that doesn't work within Scripture. There's not one better. There's not one more important. There's not one lesser. There's not one that, 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 you know, some people, well, uh, my, gifts, my, my gifts don't really work, don't really matter. When the Spirit of God comes, he says, everybody is empowered. Everybody who believes in Jesus and welcomes him to lead their life, everyone will be given the gifts. Have you, have you ever been in a church where it feels like the only person who has spiritual gifts is the pastor? You know? Or you feel, it feels like the only person who has, who, has any, who has a job in the church is the pastor. I don't know if you've ever been in a church like that. I have been in churches like that where it's like the pastor is greeting in the parking lot, which I do actually, especially for this service. But anyways, it's like, yeah, hey, hey, welcome to church. Come on in. Yeah, yeah, why don't I just walk with you? And they get to the front door. Let me get the door for you. They come on in like, hey, let me get a seat for you. There you go. And I'm just going to head up on stage and play my intro song. Ding, 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 put down my guitar, I'm like, hey, 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 now it's time for me to preach, and prayer team, can we come on up? Yes, here I am, da, 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 da. here I am to pray for you, like, were the pastor just doing everything? They're just jumping in on everything. Worship team, could you get, uh, could you play this on the keys? No problem. Mm, ding, da, da, ding, 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 and now I'm back, and here we go, and, 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 and the pastor just takes on everything. It's ridiculous. It's not a picture of the Bible. It's not a picture of when the Spirit was supposed to fall. It's not a picture of how God is moving. It's not a picture of multiple gifts. It gives the impression that the pastor gets gifts and no one else does. That the pastor gets the Spirit and no one else does. That the pastor is empowered by God and no one else is. And that the pastor is the only one. Uh, the church is going to thrive and the church is going to be taken care of and the church is going to be good. As long as the pastor does what the pastor is supposed to do, i got to tell you, that's baloney. It's not true. The church thrives when the pastor w executes and walks in his or her gifts and when every other person walks in his or hers. Not, not some people not. Not a few of us, but all of us. When, uh, when, the, when the Holy Spirit came, um, when there was this new work in the church, all of a sudden these new gifts started showing up. People were able to start to do different things. They, they started seeing healings taking place on a, on a growing, in a growing way. They started seeing prophecy taking place in a growing capacity. More people were preaching. More people were teaching. There were more people uh, speaking in tongues and discerning, uh, discerning spirits. And all of this stuff started happening. And so and automatically people started deciding which was the better one and which one was more authority, had more authority. Which one, to, like, let's, let's look at who has the best gifts. And, and I want that gift and if only I could be that gift and Paul shows up and he starts writing these people about this in 1 Corinthians 12 4 to 11 we're going to look at it because sometimes a gifts the new gifts can create a lot of dissension but always the gifts were meant to create unity that we were meant to walk in all of our own gifts, our individual unique gifts, carry out an individual unique place in the, within the movement of God, but never for our own glory, but for the, the whole church, for the whole movement, for everything to take place. In fact, the purpose of the spiritual gifts isn't for the role, it's, but it's for the whole. It's for all of us. For the whole work of God. The spiritual gift is not so that you can do your role well, but it's so that the whole work of God would be moving forward and advancing. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. There are different kinds of gifts, Paul says. But, I like the but. But, hold up a second. There are different kinds of gifts, but hold up a second. Because if you think that it's all about the gifts, I want, you to tell, I want to tell you I'm not talking all about the gifts. Just like last week when we were talking about the fruit, I wasn't talking about fruit. 
when we said there were all sorts of new fruit, it wasn't about the fruit, it was about the tree, God changing the actual tree. And the tree came from the spirit of God. In other words, Paul can, is gonna talk about fruit, he's gonna talk about gifts, but he doesn't want you to have fruit and have you to have gifts, he wants you to have the spirit and do what the spirit asks you to do. And so here he goes, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. You, Paul won't let you think about a gift without thinking about the giver. He won't let you think about what you're good at without thinking that this is actually what God is good at, not me anyways. He won't let you go, oh, well, actually, I'm uh, sorry, I'm a, I'm a real great preacher. And, 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 and forget about the one who's actually preaching through you, who's actually using you. Like, could you imagine someone coming up to you? Hello, I'm a healer. Okay, could you help change this garbage? No, does it need healing or no? If no, then no. I was like, man, Jesus came. He served all people. He, he, Jesus, Jesus showed himself to be very good at a whole lot of things, including miraculous, crazy healings, miraculous, crazy feedings, miraculous, crazy uh, 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 exorcism and casting out of demons, miraculous, crazy uh, salvations, walking on water, all of those things. By the way, there's no walking on water or flying spiritual gifts so far that I've seen. But, but there, there, there's, there's, there's these things that, that Jesus did, and all the while, while also serving the most broken, serving the most needy, hanging out with the, with the least and not always just having to show his gifts. And the Holy Spirit comes and, and meets us and it's no different. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for what? The common good. I love that. You don't have a spiritual gift that's meant to bless you and you alone or the one person that you're working with and that person alone. Your spiritual gift is for the church. It's for the movement of God. It's for God's glory. It's for the great movement that God started so many generations ago and continues to work through. Uh, you won't get a spiritual gift that you're supposed to use in isolation and just do over here. It's meant for the common good. It's meant to uplift everyone around you. It's meant to, it's meant to empower everyone. The purpose of spiritual gifts isn't for the role, but the whole. The whole of us. All of us. For common good. To one, there is given the spirit of message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the works of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. See, sometimes we go through that list and we go, okay, what's most important? Am I the healer? Am I, am I encouraging? Am I a preacher? Am I a teacher? Am I, am, I, am I discerning? Which one am I? Which one should I figure out am I? And Paul spends way more time in that very chunk of scripture telling you that it's all from one spirit than he tells you about one gift. He tells you all every time. He won't even go past three gifts without saying, but it's from one spirit. Hold on. It's not about the gift. It's about the spirit of God. It's not about what you can do. It's about God moving through you. It's not about just, just what, that one thing you've got. It's about the great work that God wants to do in this collective of people. One spirit. One team. No stars. I, had, I, had a, I coached basketball uh, for quite a few years, uh, grade 9, 10 basketball at Victoria High School. And, uh, and in, in, in Vic High, uh, it, was, it was a pretty, it was a fairly rough school. And uh, when, when I'd go there, we'd show up and there'd be, there'd be a, a few guys who have, you know, they've been playing some, some street ball and they've been, they've been playing basketball out on the courts and they're, they're pretty used to running the court themselves. They're pretty used to not passing to anyone, pretty used to not, not sharing with anyone. They just want to tell you, hey, hey, you know, I, I'll take it. Just get me the rock, you know, get me the ball. I'll take the hoop, no problem. And so they're going and they're, get, they're just destroying our team. Our team's getting just defeated like crazy. They might be the best player in the league, but their team is the worst team in the league because they can't figure out how to pass. They're going to ruin every team that they go on. 
Because a team is always going to be better than an individual. And sometimes we think our individual gifts is, a, is, is what we're supposed to uh, walk with. And so this, this one guy had to bench him all the time. Like, you're out, man. You got to sit on the side. I'm going to put in this point guard who's a lot less of a player than you, but makes the team a lot better than you because he plays on a team instead of playing as an individual. I love this, that the Spirit, he says, it says, he distributes them to each one just as he determines. You can picture the Holy Spirit looking at the Comox Valley or Alberni Valley or the island. And, okay, let me see here. Northgate Church is going to be there. I like it. Now, what do we got in the neighborhood? Okay, we're going to need this. We're going to need that. And, okay, there's someone. They look willing. Okay, okay and I'm going to do this. And, and that person's praying for it. Boom. Okay, there we go. What a team. This is awesome. Ding, 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 ding. And everything's lighting up. You know, this Holy Spirit like, oh, I like this. Look at this. Wow. And then all of a sudden that light goes out and that light goes out and that light goes out and that light. Holy Spirit, like, what's going on? Like, what's happening? Where's everyone going? Like, oh no, they want to play their own sport. They want to get their own glory. They want, to, they want to celebrate their own gift. They want to tell everyone that their gift is better than the other gifts. And the Holy Spirit's like, oh man, well, I better bench them. And start building someone else up. Some of you are like, no, no, no. As long as I'm walking in my gifts, then I shouldn't be benched. This is, there is no denying here. Your gifts are not for you. They're not, it doesn't, he doesn't even say at this point that they're for God. He says they're for the common good. Is the common good for God? Yes. We're doing the common good for God, but he doesn't say use them for God and avoid the common good. He says they're first through for the common good. Your gifts should grow this church. Your gifts should expand God's kingdom in this Comox Valley. If you're part of this church, then I have a lack that you fill with your gifts. If you're part of this church, then this whole pastoral team has a lack that you're going to fill through your gifts and what you have to offer. Because God didn't want this church to grow because of me or our pastoral team, but because of us. Moving in his spirit, through his gifts, through his empowering, and his grace. Amen? Amen. Paul goes on. <clears throat> We're going to jump, jump around a bit here, but 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 20, and then 26. It says, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, this is Paul's attempt at humor, he's hilarious. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. I love that. Like imagine your foot, literally. Like Paul's, Paul's like trying to paint a pretty clear picture here, and I think we get it. I think it's pretty clear. Imagine your foot, you, know, you looked at your foot, and all of a sudden it was a hand. You know, that'd be freaky. You know, you'd be looking at it like, what kind of shoes do I put on this thing? Like how do I handle that thing? And he says, just because your foot says it's, it's, a, it's a hand, or if it's not a hand, I don't want to be part of this body. I'm going to try to be something else. You don't all of a sudden uh, uh, make it work. Your body can't just make it work all of a sudden. If both of your feet said, I'm now hands. Like I just want to be a hand, and that's all I want to do. You can't, you can't function that way. Or, or, or my hand was all of a sudden a foot my hand said, well, I'm not a foot, so I can't even move this body. This is, this is annoying. I'm trying to get over there, and my hand's stuck over here. I need to become a foot. Become a foot, and the foot pops up to the hand, and like, it's just creepy. It's like a scary movie all of a sudden. Like, what do we got here? Like, that, that, that just looks, looks bizarre. The ear starts saying to the eye, I, I, I think I want to become an eye, and if I'm not an eye, I'm not going to be a part of the body. You can't imagine the ear saying that, because like, ear, I need to hear. I need to listen. I need, I, need, I need opportunities. Yeah, but you're always using your eyes. It's not fair. I want to be the eye. You're always using your feet. I want to be the foot. I, 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 just, I just don't. I just don't I'm, I'm tired of being walked on. I want to be reaching, you know. Or, and, and we're just talking about these awesome appendages with lots of moving parts. Imagine if you had to be the elbow. Oh, you, you look at your elbow, you think, what a useless thing. Like, that doesn't get to do anything. Like, this, this is the one that gets all the credit. You don't call it an elbow shake because it's a handshake, right? You know, all of these parts of the arm shook the hand, but you don't give the credit to all of these parts of the arm, just the hand. Imagine you're the elbow of the church. What's your job, elbow? What do you do? Bend. That's it. Bend. 
and I help the hand do what the hand needs to do. What do you do next time? Help the hand do what the hand needs to do. I listen to the brain, I follow my, the rule, I reach, and the hand gets the credit again. You know, some of us are going to be that in the church. Some of you are elbows. Amen? Some of you are meant to be elbows. You're gonna, you're gonna, you, some of us, if we're not walking by the Spirit, we're going to hate that until the day we die. But if we're walking by the Spirit, we start to say, wow, the Spirit is moving here. They will how's the spirit moving? By me bending. By me being an elbow. Let me, let me ask you this. What's the more important part for digestion, teeth or stomach? <laughs> you know? Right? I know. I thought about that when I thought about the, the gift and the one body. What's more important? Let me see here. I, I mash the food up with my teeth, and then I spit it out if I don't have a stomach. Oh, if I just have a stomach, I like, I'm going to grab like a, 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 a watermelon. <laughs> like, like, it doesn't work. The body doesn't work that way. We know that about our body. We know that some of the parts seem kind of useless, and yet they have in, infinite use. You know what it's like when your shoulder is sore, and now you can't use the arm that you want to use. You say, I've still got this super useful hand, but it's useless without my shoulder. It loses so much of its use without my shoulder. Body's the same way. But some of us think that if I'm not doing this in the church, I must not have purpose. If I'm not on the worship team, I don't know if I actually want to be part of this church. You know, if I don't get to do, if I don't, sure, yeah, I'll serve in that for a few weeks. But if I'm not, if I'm not moving up the ranks in the church, then I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to be an elbow forever. Guess what? My elbow is going to be my elbow until I'm dead. Some of us need to walk in the Spirit so that we can discover the humility that it will take to carry out the gifts that we have. Some of us were limited in our humility. Pride gets in the way. Well, I'm a, I'm a prophet. Let me prophesy, and if I can't prophesy, I'm not interested in being here. Jesus said, be a servant of all. The church needs someone to sweep the floors. I got an email from someone this week, loved it. I said, they said, uh, look, we're, we're interested in your church. We're part, we're, we've, we've come, sometimes we want to start serving on team. Uh, we've we've, we've uh, done, this is our experience in the past. We've led worship. Uh, we, we, we've, uh, we've played these instruments. Uh, we've swept floors, and we're happy to do any of those things. I love that. They're not like, hey, as long as we're on the stage, we're good. No, if you want us to sweep floors, if that's the need at the church, we're going to walk out that need because we want to see the body thrive. We don't want to see us thrive. We want to see the body thrive. Man, if, you, if we all had that position in our church, if we all were walking that way in our church, you know, if you're a business person, you know how that works in business. If you're a family person, you know how that works in your family. You know, if you're, if you're working in society, if you're a teacher, you know how that works in an organization when everyone takes a place to serve. And here we are following Jesus. He said, all I want you to do is serve like me. That's what you need to do in your life. Serve the way that I have served. I came to be a servant of all. And we're like, I'll do it in my business. I'll do it in my family. I'll do it in the office place. I'll do it as an employee over there. But I'm not going to do it on church unless I'm on stage. What? I think we're at about 40% of our church serves right now. I want it to be 100 by the fall. The room's getting quiet. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I'm not surprised that Amy just said it's good. Amy, Amy works on sound right now. She brings her two kids. Rich runs our live stream every single week. Her and Rich are here early and late. They start the third service early. They end it late. She's at Port Alberni with us every Tuesday so far. She's, but Rich has served on base. Amy has served wherever is needed. When there's child care necessary, they're there. When there's support necessary, they're there. When there's extra setup required on the stage, when there's extra setup that are completely uh, mean elbow tasks for the church, they're there. Whatever we ask of them, they are there. I'm not surprised Amy shouting amens in this moment. Can we give her a clap? Can we give her a clap? That's the culture that we need. That's the culture. 
Now, he goes on, says, If an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? I love that. What if we were all preachers? What a lame old church. You come into church, no one's there in the parking lot. You show up to the door, no one's there. You're sort of wondering if anyone exists in this place. You go through the lobby. There's some coffee machines with no one taking care of them. There's garbage all over the floor. It's a big mess. And no one's saying hello to you. The music, none. Uh, you know, they carry on. Where's, where's kids signing? Mm-mm, not happening. You know, you don't, there's, no, there's no kids stuff happening here. Uh, you open the doors and this stage is just packed with people shouting and yelling. You have no idea what one of them saying because they're just trying to get a little louder than the person next to them. It would be a terrible church. Uh, God's called us to be a body, not a bunch of individuals. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Is anyone watching the the Toronto Raptors make a historical run right now? If you, don't, if you don't know who the Toronto Raptors are, they are, they are Canada's basketball team. Some people try to deny that, but they are. Uh, you heard it here. Um, and and uh, they, are, they are today's game two of them uh, playing against Golden State War. It's just fun. It's a, an exciting time right now uh, for Can- Canadian basketball, even though I don't know if there's one Canadian player on the team. <clears throat> Anyways... Uh, uh, the, uh, two in the last series, there was this. Uh, there was this point when they were playing a team that they should be beating, and uh, there's this one guy named Mark Gasol. And uh, if you know, if you know Mark, he's a good player. We like him on the team. But it was like he he he's like seven feet tall, and he was hanging out at the three point arc, which is where the smaller guys generally should be. The good shooter should be seven footer, should be under the paint, slamming some dunks down. And so he's out there at the three pointer. Every time they pass him the ball, he's like j- jumping brick. Like it's bouncing everywhere. It's like, oh, no words. I'll come back next time. They pass him the ball. He just shoots. He's not passing. He's not getting in the paint. He's just hanging out at the three-point arc, shooting, 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 shooting. They're like, oh, now he's 0 for 9, 0 for 10, 0 for 11. I'm like, stop shooting the ball, man. You're a big. Go get where you're supposed to be. Let the other people do what they're supposed to do. Look, sometimes we're not going to have the best shot that we need to have. We're not going to be able to perform like the other people are performing. We're not going to be able to contribute like we've been able to contribute. So we need to learn to pass the ball. We need to learn to share and recognize other people's gifts as well. Paul keeps going. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Isn't it good to know you are who you're meant to be? You know, isn't it good to know? Isn't that affirming to the Ruth and Eugene Grams who serve and just cook food almost every day? (laughs) Just care for the youth, serve on Saturdays, serve on sound team, to buy groceries. Some of you have to buy groceries on a weekly basis for the gate or for the, the kitchen. I, I, I bet no one besides your leader has ever recognized you for that. Isn't it good to know that God placed you in that position for that purpose and you have value there? Whether anyone else sees it, isn't it good to know that that's the case? If they were all one part, where would the body be as it is? There are many parts, but one body. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Worship team, you can come on up. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. I don't know if you've ever rolled your ankle before. I have. When I was in my teen years, I I did a silly thing called skateboarding. And, uh, and I did that for a couple summers, and, and uh, 
one time I, I, was, I was practicing this heel flip and my board only got halfway around. I got my foot stuck in the trucks and my, my ankle just zing, <laughs> rolled over. You know, it was one of those situations when the doctor said it would have been so much better if you broke this, but uh, nothing I can do, bye-bye, you know. And, and I had this massive, like, ankle. Like, I, could bear, I couldn't walk for a few, uh, a few days and then I started sort of hobbling on it. Well, as I was hobbling on that ankle, soon I, I, a, a strange thing happened. My knees started getting sore. So I was favoring my, my ankle. So I'd be walking, and now I'm like, oh, 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 my knee, my ankle. Soon my hips started being sore. I'm like, man, I, I'm, how old am I? I'm in my teenage years. Like, what's going on here? But I, my whole entire leg was sore. I, I, my, I, I had, my hip was out. My knee was out just because my ankle was hurt. The body of Christ is the exact same way. Some of you are sitting on gifts that you could be offering to God through this church in really special ways. And the, the body's gonna keep on limping along. But don't think that it doesn't hurt us. Don't think that it doesn't hurt when you say, I, I'm just not gonna worry about serving there. I do plenty elsewhere and doing that. Don't think that that doesn't hurt us. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. Here we go, we're gonna keep moving. And it's gonna be the spirit work. I love that God, like right here, Paul is not, is, he's, he's not saying, well, as long as some gifts are firing, then no problem. He says, if one is suffering, we all suffer. Well, the spirit distributes gifts. If you don't wanna use it, the whole body is going to suffer. It's amazing that God would piece us together in such a way that we would depend on one another to see the fullness of God show up in the Comox Valley. Isn't that a shocking concept? No, shouldn't we just depend on the Spirit and I'll just do what I'm supposed to do and that's it? No. It's not what the Bible teaches anyways. The Bible doesn't say just go to the Holy Spirit and, and do whatever you're supposed to do and away you go. It says that if the body is suffering, so are you. If the body doesn't have you because you're like, no, I don't want to do that role. I'm going to be over here being a hand even though the church needs me to be a knee over there. I'm not going to do that. I've got to do this thing. The whole church feels it. God, God calls us this way. So uh, I'm just going to put one response on your, on your radar. Um, fall is coming. I know some of you are like, summer's not even here. Good. I'm giving you plenty of warning. Fall is coming. In fall, we're going to have the greatest need <laughs> that we've had for years. In the last, in the last w within four and a half years, we'll have gone from a church of one service on a Sunday morning to a church of two cities, four services uh, spread across Sunday. That's a big shift. That's a lot of change. And I, I just feel like if, if God is calling us into that change, I mean, we're seeing people come to know Jesus. We're seeing people get baptized. We're seeing pe more people want to get baptized. We're seeing people already lining up to do that. We're seeing amazing things happen. But if God's doing that, and then we're just saying, well, I'll just probably do the same. I just don't believe that's what God has for you. I don't believe that, that if you're here saying, I'm just going to come to church and check it out and see, see what the pastor has for us today and see what the worship team has for us today. For me, I just don't believe that's what the Spirit of God is doing in your life right now. And you might say, I don't have time to serve. Maybe we need to pray for our priority. Say, well, I'm not sure if I believe in everything about that church. You don't get to change the body without being part of it. Something other than my body can't change my body. If my whole body exercises, then I can, then I can, my body can change. It can shift. But if, but if something out here just tries to change my, like it just won't work. Maybe it's time for you to consider being on team. And so I want to encourage you. There's spaces for everyone. <laughs> Especially Think about the fact that while we're going through one of the biggest transitions our church has gone through in a long time, which I believe is exactly where God has called us to be, we're going to be uh, uh, r removing, uh, we're going to see stepping out two of our pastors, two of our five pastors are going to be stepping out of their roles in that same transition. Man, 
if I'm not convinced in this time that God is calling the church to rise up, I don't know when I ever would be. It's ne- there hasn't been a point in my, there hasn't been a slight even moment in my life so far where I've been more sure of what we're supposed to be doing. And yet there hasn't also been a point in my life where I've been more uh, uh, unsure of how God was going to accomplish it. But when I look in this room, I start to see it. I start to know it. So, I want to encourage you, if you're not on some sort of Sunday team, plan on being in the fall. There are teams when you can just serve once a month. That's not a huge commitment. Once a month you jump in, open doors for people, shake hands, say hello. We can, we can figure it out. Some, of you, some people do it with kids. Some, there are some roles you can do as a whole family. So you say, well, I'm not that spiritually mature yet. It doesn't take a whole lot of spiritual maturity to wave to people as they come in the parking lot and say hello. And so I want to see you serving on teams. So I want, I want you even today to say, I, I'm going to sign up in the fall. I'm going to be involved. I, I'm going to be part of this body. There are some things that I can do. There are some ways that I can serve. If you say, I don't know what my giftings are, sometimes that's even better because then you're not so limited to such a small portion of things. But you can just say, I get to be like Jesus and serve wherever he asks me to serve. You can sign up online. Plan on it. Once a month, join a Sunday team. Be involved with us. There's guest services. There's kids. There's production, uh, lighting and sound. There's video. There's worship. And, and, and we're, we're now developing our prayer and care team. Those are the teams. Sign up for fall. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord, that when your spirit fell, when your spirit moved, It wasn't for the empowerment of a few leaders to lead all these Christians. It was for the empowerment of every believer to step into the the Christian faith, to step into the work that you were doing. Thank you that you have roles and positions for every person. Thank you, God, that you want to use us. Thank you, God, that you have plans for us. Help us to walk with you. Help us to lean on you. Help us to wait on the Spirit and discover who we are. But God, I pray that our discovering who we are doesn't keep us from serving wherever you go. I pray, Lord, that today you would rise up, uh, uh, yeah, prophets and teachers and discerners of spirits. Lord, I do pray that you would rise up people that would, that would speak in tongues and that would interpret those tongues. But Lord, I also pray that you would rise up people uh, who are willing to change garbages and sweep up after an event knowing that, uh, that cleaning up after that event allowed that event to happen. People who will cook and who will clean. People who will help with security. People who will help with, with just walking with people, people who will take others out for coffee. Lord, would you rise up the servant-heartedness within this church? Thank you, God, that it's not about the gifts, it's about the Spirit that gives them. It's not about the fruit, but the Spirit that gives them. Help us, God, to rely on you. You're the way. Jesus, you have a strategy. (laughs) Holy Spirit is our strategy. Thank you that you gave that strategy that you've got all the pieces you need if we just allow ourselves to be empowered to walk with you. Help us, Lord. Shape our hearts. Show us how we can do it. Show us how we can serve. Teach us how to do it, Jesus. In your name we pray, and anyone who believes it says, amen, amen. Let's do it, church. Why don't we all stand up together? These guys are going to lead us out of here. We love you. Come on back next week. Uh, We're going to have a fun time wrapping up this new series. It's going to be great. We'll see you then.